Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon S. And in this lesson, we'll discover together what we call le pluriel des noms composés. Because it's actually quite tricky for uh, persons who are learning French and even for French people. In some cases, it can be quite tricky to put, when we call uh, this non composé, of course, we, we call about a noun, but it's composed, so uh, normally you get two parts. And uh, when you want to put this uh, noun at the plural form, then it can be a bit tricky. This video will only um, focus on the nouns that are formed uh, by two nouns, okay? So we're not uh, uh, talking about uh, adjectives or verbs or preposition because it's possible. In that case, we're only uh, concentrating on these nouns composed by two nouns, okay? And, well, the thing is that, as always in French, it's never 100%, because that's the way it works, but then the good news is that it's 90% and it's quite much uh, in 90% of the cases the two nouns uh, will actually be at the plural form okay so if you want to put uh, these this noun at the plural form you will have to put uh, the two nouns that compose this uh, composed noun at the plural Okay, I hope I'm clear. <laughs> so uh, I've been preparing few examples. Okay, and here you've got the well singer of form, le singulier. And the first one, un homme grenouille. Okay, so I will put here that uh, translation in English. Okay, un homme grenouille. And so, well, as I said, if you want to put this noun at the plural form, then you will get des hommes here. So the s mark of the plural and then here as well mark of the plural grenouille okay so un homme grenouille des hommes grenouilles un homme orchestre and so you get the translation here same thing des hommes orchestre okay so you get the plural here and then the plural here okay un homme sandwich and then you will get des hommes sandwich like that as well une infirmière chef will give you des infirmières chef okay and then you can notice that well as we saw previously this final s is not pronounced so clearly if you only think about i mean the phonetical aspect of the the thing une infirmière chef des infirmières chef the only difference will be here in the liaison because actually you don't pronounce this final s here or here okay so une infirmière chef des infirmières chef un aide comptable des aides comptables okay same thing you put this s and s here but then you don't pronounce them un aide cuisinier, des aides cuisiniers. Ok, S and S. Un aide infirmier, des aides infirmiers. Un avion cargo, des avions cargo. Same thing, S, S, but then you don't pronounce them. Un avocat conseil. Des avocats conseil. S, S, but then you don't pronounce it. All of them. Un café concert. Des cafés concerts. Un café théâtre, des cafés théâtres. And that's it. 
uh, I would advise you to watch the next uh, videos because uh, I will well continue the same uh, with the same theme so the plural of the all these composed uh, nouns okay so but then if you want to watch more videos then youtube.com slash image is waiting for you and then I'm also on Facebook so uh, don't be afraid and like me oh I will be so happy <laughs> and that more material can be found here www.imagier.net have a great day bye bye bonjour à tous and welcome to learn french with vincent this is unité 13 leçon t and it's the second part uh, of this uh, topic le pluriel des noms composés okay so if you didn't watch the first part well i would advise you to do it okay so it's uh, maybe it would be more clear uh, okay if you did then <laughs> let's start and then keep in mind that this video in this video will um, work or will will see the words uh, that will be uh, composed by uh, a noun and uh, an adjective okay so in the previous uh, lesson we saw uh, well these nouns when they were composed by two nouns okay but in that case uh, it will be noun and adjective Okay, and then, well, it will be exactly the same thing. It's never 100% in French, so it will be 90%. So in 90% of the cases, um, you will have to put uh, well the noun and the adjective at the plural form if you want to, well, put this all uh, noun, so this composed noun uh, at the plural form. Okay, so we'll see how it works. And then uh, we'll have first the singular form here. So here is uh, the first one, un haut commissionnaire, okay, un haut commissionnaire. And if we want to put this word at the plural form, then it will be quite simple because you just need to here and here add the plural form. So in that case, it's S and S, okay, des hauts commissionnaires. And if you're a bit careful, you can hear that un haut commissionnaire and des hauts commissionnaires, well, clearly it is pronounced the same way so you put the s at the end of both uh, things here okay but then you don't pronounce them so it will be phonetically almost the same okay in most of the cases un haut relief okay un haut relief and if we want to put the plural form then it's quite simple because s and s but then we don't pronounce them here des hauts relief Okay, un haut relief, des hauts reliefs. Un franc maçon, okay, un franc maçon, and then plural form exactly the same rule, s here and s here, des francs maçons, and then you don't pronounce them, des francs maçons. Un franc tireur, un franc tireur, and then plural form exactly the same rule, des francs tireurs. Un court bouillon, un court bouillon, and then if you want to put the plural form, well, same rule, S, S, you don't pronounce it, des court bouillons. Un court bouillon, des court bouillons. Un court circuit, un court circuit, same thing, des court circuits, des court circuits. Un bon père, un beau père. So here it's interesting because if you remember, we saw that previously, this beau, so the adjective beau, you get the singular form here and you get the plural here. You don't put S at the end for the plural, but you will put this X, okay? So X à la fin de beau, okay? But then it's exactly the same thing because you don't pronounce it. Des beaux Père. Okay, remember the S, but then it's silent. Des beaux-pères. Un beau-père, des beaux-pères. Une belle-mère, des belles-mères. Same rule here, S and S, but you don't pronounce it. Une belle-sœur, des belles-sœurs. Okay, une belle-sœur, des belles-sœurs. And that's it. Uh, try to watch the next video because uh well probably we will end this series of uh, plural of the composed nouns 
um, or words. Okay, but then if you want more video, then youtube.com slash image is waiting for you. If you want to like me on Facebook, I'm right here. And then the website is waiting for you, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon U. And in this lesson, we'll continue this series of videos that uh, we've been starting well, two videos uh, before, um, and the topic is le pluriel des noms composés. And we'll take the time in this video to see something quite tricky. And I'm really sorry about that, but, well, I need to do my job and to explain or to tell you how it goes. Uh, when you get this composed noun, and uh, when this composed noun uh, is composed by first a noun or not first but then a noun and the adjective uh, grand because in most of the cases this grand will be in the first place okay uh, it will be tricky <laughs> it will be tricky let's be let's be honest um, the thing is that we'll, we will need to divide this video and to see how it works for the masculine form and then the feminine form just because uh, when we'll see the masculine form it's actually quite easy it is not difficult at all because when we've got this example like un grand père okay so of course you get first this grand and then after that you get the pair if you want to put this word at the plural form then you will get des grand père and it's actually quite simple because it will respect the rule i mean the, the the thing that we saw previously you just need to put s at the end of each words okay so grand with s and then pair with s like that okay so it's not really difficult and especially if you think about that you don't pronounce this s so actually phonetically it's the same grand pair here and grand pair here okay so let's be honest i mean if it's for the masculine form then it's not difficult but if it's for the feminine form and that's where it is a bit strange but i mean that's just a language so we need to see how it goes if you have at the singular form for the feminine this form here so grand instead of grand because normally it's an adjective and normally we should have a here okay but it does i mean it does happen that in some cases like with this word in grand-mère then actually you don't have this e uh, at the end of the adjective so if you have this form so first the adjective grand at the feminine but not really at the feminine because you don't have this e uh, okay then that's when it will be tricky because you will have well two options to put the plural form the first one will be this one so you just put this S and S at the end of the first and the second part. Okay. And it's also possible to see it like that. So only S at the end of the second word or the second part of this composed word. Okay. So de grand-mère. As I said, phonetically it's the same anyway because it will be une grand-mère des grand-mères and then des grand-mères okay so phonetically the same form but you've got to keep in mind that you know this is how it should be written correctly and in that case keep in mind that the two options are co sorry correct okay so that's the first part and it's also possible to see composed words or nouns with first the adjective grand but at the feminine form like here with grande okay and then duchesse and in that case well not really difficult because you just you know do what we've been doing so far so you just put s at the end of the first part and s at the end of the second part okay and you will get une grande duchesse plural des grandes duchesses okay so i hope it is clear <laughs> uh, we've got another video coming um, concerning that topic because I think that uh, we need to we need to clarify a few things uh, more but then if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier and then uh, the, the page on Facebook is right here and more material can be found at the following address have a great day bye bye
Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is unit 13, leçon V. And in this lesson, we'll end the series of videos about le pluriel des noms composés. Okay? And we'll see actually three different uh, types of uh, noms composés in this video. Okay? So we'll start the, uh, with the first one. And the first one, actually, it will be un nom composé. So the first part will be un nom, and the second part will be une préposition, and the last part will be un complément. Okay, so we'll not worry. We'll see an example. Uh, and in that case, well, in like 90% of the cases, uh, the rule will be that it will be only le premier nom that will take the mark of the plural. Okay, so we'll see just one example. Un arc-en-ciel. Okay, so it's actually quite interesting. So the meaning is here, rainbow. And um, if you have a look, so you get first arc and then you get the preposition and after that you get the complément ciel. Okay, and so if we respect the rule that we saw previously, it's only the first part here. So le nom arc that will take the mark of the plural and then it will be S. Okay, so you will have un arc-en-ciel and then the plural form, des arc-en-ciel. Okay, you can see that as usual we don't really pronounce this final S, so phonetically it's almost the same, but then we've got this liaison between the two, des arc-en-ciel. Okay, second situation, un nom formé d'une préposition or un préfixe et d'un nom. Okay, and so in that case, le nom prend la marque du pluriel. Okay, so we'll see an example. And it's a good example and quite useful here. Une demi-heure. Okay, so demi is half and then heure, hour. Okay, so in that case you get this demi first and then you get this heure. Okay, and so if we respect the rule that we saw, it will be only le nom, like here, so heure, that will take here, the plural. So you will have to put the S at the end of er, and you don't touch this prefix demi in that case. Okay? Des demi-heures. Une demi-heure, des demi-heures. Okay? And last but not least, un nom formé d'une phrase, locution adverbiale, de verbe ou d'infinitif. Okay? In that case, the good thing is that you don't need to touch the word at all. Okay, so it will stay the same whether it's at the singular form or at the plural. And then just wanted to give you this beautiful one. It's one of my, of my favorite. Un je ne sais quoi. Okay, well, it's quite used in English as well, but then I just wanted to uh, give you a maybe a more clear uh, translation, okay? So, un je ne sais quoi, and then if we respect the rule, then des je ne sais quoi, so you don't touch at all the word, you just put it like that, no s, okay? And then phonetically, of, of course, it's the, it's the same pronunciation, okay? Un je ne sais quoi, des je ne sais quoi. And that's it. Yuppie, yuppie, it's over. Uh, if you want to check or to have uh, more videos, then they are right here on YouTube. And then uh, like me on Facebook, I will be so happy. Uh, if you want more material, then you can find it right here, www.imagier.net. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.